I love learning how people from long ago lived, the tools they made to survive, and one of my passions is recreating ancient tools. I especially get excited when I find examples of tools that survived for hundreds or thousands of years. One example is Utzi the Iceman. He's a 5,000 year old frozen body that was found in northern Italy. I actually got to go visit the spot where they found the body and I see the Iceman at the museum and all his tools. I made a YouTube video on the knife that he carried. Over 5,000 years ago, he carried this knife with a flint tip and it had a sheath made out of twisted uh, cordage of a bark of a tree. Now, another video that I wanted to do for a long time is to make another Iceman knife. Not Utzi the Iceman, who's really famous and is really old, over 5,000 years old. A lesser known Iceman named the Canadian Iceman. He's several hundred years old and he carried a knife just like this. So in this video, I'll show you step by step how the Canadian Iceman made his knife using traditional methods and tools. To start this project, we first need to make the blade, which on the original knife was a thin piece of iron that likely came from ship wreckage. It was a nail that was salvaged from debris that washed up on shore. Up until now, these people were using stone tools, so I'm sure any iron that washed up on shore was really valuable and fashioned into tools. I don't know if it originally was made by cold hammering, where you just smash it between two rocks and grind a sharp edge, or heating it in the fire, so we're going to try both. Now, I found this nail on the beach last time my family went. The kids were looking for seashells, and I was looking for a nail, and I found this one. I have no idea how old it is, but it's pretty rusty and will work for this project. So let's start pounding it and shaping it and see if we can make a blade for our knife. That outer layer there is just rust, but I'm starting to see some shiny metal as you start hitting it harder. I've been working this old rusty nail we found on the beach for about 10 minutes just pounding it between two rocks and on the tip there that rust flaked off and you can see shiny metal and it's actually made a really nice blade. This will be perfect for a knife. The next step while it's still connected to this rust here is just work it on the stone, get a nice sharp blade, then we'll break it off and we're done with the blade and we can move on to the next step. I thought I was going to have to heat it up with fire but no, just two rocks and we can make a really nice blade. This blade now has a razor edge and it will be great for cutting. I've also hammered this part really thin right here so anytime you have a thick piece of metal to a thin piece of metal it will break off easily. You just sit there, give it a little twist and we now have a blade we can insert into our handle. Let's go make the handle. The handle was made out of hemlock wood which is a very common tree found growing in the Pacific Northwest. It was used to make a lot of different tools and in this case a knife handle. Now I'm going to remove the bark and then saw it to length and uh, to do that they had a lot of different tools. They obviously used the iron knife blade when they could get shipwrecked nails, but they also made blades out of slate. Here's a piece of slate that I ground an edge on, and that was used for making projectile points and knives, and I'm going to use it here to scrape off the bark. You can see that really nice hemlock wood down below. The slate blade is working just perfect as a scraper for removing that bark. And once we're done, we'll cut this to length with the basalt saw blade. Here's the piece of basalt that I'm going to use as a saw. It has a really rough edge along there. And when you move it back and forth on the wood, it makes a really nice groove. You'll do that all the way around and you'll be able to break it off and have a clean cut. With this basalt saw blade, I have a nice groove carved all the way around and you should be able to snap it just like that. I also scored one on this side and so we'll be able to snap that as well. We'll still have to do some final shaping on this hemlock wood, but for now it's a good base for a knife handle. Our wooden handle is 16 centimeters long, just over 2 centimeters wide, and even though we removed all the bark, it's still kind of rough. We need to do some final smoothing, round out the ends, and we also need to carve a groove in one end that's deep enough to seat our iron blade. Then we can wrap it and secure it. And to do all this, I'm going to continue using Stone Age tools. I've already started the groove here, and I'm using a piece of basalt, a small triangle piece that works like a saw. You can just work it back and forth, and once that groove is deep enough, we'll put in the blade, and it'll be perfect. Now it's kind of rough right here, we need to smooth that out, and to do that I'm going to use this. This is a piece of pumice, it's really abrasive, and when you work it back and forth, it works just like sandpaper. 
Now we also need to carve and round out the edges. I've done quite a bit of carving with Stone Age tools and the best rock that I found for that is obsidian. Now this is obsidian, it's natural volcanic glass and it makes razor sharp blades. They're kind of brittle but they also work really good at carving wood and once they become dull you can just make new ones. It's real simple to make these blades. You look at the rock here and you have these natural high spots. Those are called ridges and if you strike on the top of them you can send energy down that ridge and make a blade. And I strike it with this. This is a piece of rock that I got out of the river. It's called a hammerstone. It's pecked on one end from banging it against obsidian. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this obsidian against my leg. There's a high spot there. And when we hit it right there, a blade will come off in this direction. And then we can use it to carve. So we'll just line it up right there. Give it a nice tap. Look at all those blades. That was a lot of them. Those will be perfect. I'll show you how well these carve the wood. You can see how well that obsidian just carves that wood. It comes right off and as it becomes dull we'll just make more blades. Now you do have to be careful when working obsidian because it is razor sharp and it's easy to cut yourself but it does carve wood really well. I'm going to keep working this wooden handle with the stone tools. It will take a while and when it's done I'll show you the next step. Here's our wooden handle after we're done shaping it. The original had an angle carved into the back. It's nice and smooth and it has a deep groove in front that perfectly fits our iron blade. It just seats right in there like that. We're now ready to wrap and secure it. On the original knife, this was secured using sinew. Sinew looks like this when it's dry. It's the tendons of a deer or an elk. You can use leg sinew or you can also use back sinew, which is what this is. I got this off of a deer last year it's the long, tough fibers that go along the loin or the back strap. You have to cut that off when you eat them anyway, and they're really useful. They've been used for thousands of years as wrappings on arrows, knives, and uh, you can make bowstrings out of them. You get the long fibers out of these by pulling it apart. You can see those come. They run long ways, and when they're dry, they shrink, and when you uh, soak them in water or put them in your mouth and chew on them, they become soft and pliable and they actually expand. This is what they look like when they're wet. They're more white and they're uh, very pliable here. And when you wrap those, the beautiful thing about sinew is that it shrinks and so it'll make a really tight bond on that knife blade. So let's wrap that iron blade into the handle with sinew. I'm just gonna take several long pieces of our wet sinew. You take the end and uh, lay it back so that when it wraps, it'll wrap over itself. And you just go around and make a really nice tight wrapping the whole length of the blade. To finish off the wrapping, I usually just do a half hitch where I come around on itself, tuck it through, and then uh, secure it. When that dries, it will hold itself in place. Now the sinew wasn't the only hafting that was on this knife. He further secured it. He put a piece of bone on top of this, and that would keep the blade from going up or down. So I need to carve a piece of bone here that's a little sliver that fits on top of this, and then we're going to wrap it a second time with rawhide lashing. So while this is drying and shrinking, I'm going to make the bone sliver to go on top of the blade. The sinew wrapping is now dry. I completed shaping the bone sliver, which slides on top of the blade just like that to help reinforce it and we're ready to move on to the next step with our second wrapping. Over the sinew wrapping and the bone sliver, there was a second wrapping of rawhide or leather. Here I have a piece of brain tan deer leather and an obsidian blade that's so sharp it will easily cut this. We can cut a nice long strip that we can use for a wrapping. Just goes like that. Now will work perfectly. We have our long leather strip here, so we'll do our second wrapping, just tucking that end right next to the bone going around and then carefully wrapping the first third of the knife which will secure everything in place. I'm just going to do a basic half hitch knot to tie it off there. Pull that tight and uh, the original had a little tail of leather too so I'm going to leave that long and we have our knife. It's now complete. Whenever I complete a project like this I think about the people from long ago that made these tools to survive with. You can hold it in your hand, put your thumb right there on that bone and see just how well this works for fine detail cutting. Some people might wonder what this was used for since the blade is so small, but they found traces of protein and fat on it, so it was likely used to butcher and skin animals. One animal it was probably used to skin was gophers or what is actually ground squirrels. The Canadian Iceman had a garment on him that consisted of over 90 ground squirrel skins sewn together. And this knife also had a sheath made out of ground squirrel skin, similar to this guy here. And in part two of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to test out this knife by skinning a ground squirrel and making a sheath out of it, sewing it up with some sinew. 
In the spirit of sticking with traditional methods and tools, I made some deadfall traps and have been catching squirrels. They work great and they've been used for thousands of years. So in part two of this video, we'll skin a squirrel and make a sheath. Now, if you want to learn more about the Canadian Iceman, click the link in the description below. It's an amazing story and we have a lot to learn from people of the past.